some pros for methadone are um, it's not just you know your classic kind of uh, opioid it also has NMDA receptor activity which has been postulated to help decrease the development of opioid tolerance it's also postulated to have more of a, of a benefit in patients with neuropathic pain um, methadone you can dose it every eight hours or every 12 hours so you kind of tailor it to the patient in that way um, methadone is actually the only extended release tablet that's an, op an opioid that can actually be crushed and you're not breaking the long-acting mechanism of it um, and also comes in tablet and then solution formulation so depending on the patient and what their needs are um, there is some flexibility there some drawbacks with methadone one thing I can think of is drug-drug interactions it's metabolized primarily through CYP3A4 and to be six. To be six. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, there has a lot of CYP enzymes, which lots of other medications are metabolized through that system, and so it can lead to a lot of drug-drug interactions. Another thing I can think about is the fact that um, in patients who have a risk for QTC prolongation, um, EKG monitoring is sometimes required in those patients, so that can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, drug interactions, EKG. Um, and then it has variable pharmacokinetics, so its half-life can be anywhere from 5 to 60 hours. So some patients it might not last very long, but in some other patients we can get into trouble if we adjust the dose or give them too much medication um, at one time because further down the road it might continue to escalate. So we have to be careful because it has such variable half-life in patients. I guess that would be a patient-dependent consideration. Um, so in some patients, if they're getting functional and quality of life and analgesic benefit, that may outweigh some of the risks, and we're able to monitor, get EKGs to monitor their QTC and then make interventions if necessary if something goes on. And we can also take a look at the other medications the patient's on and determine whether or not the other medications that are on board, if it's safe to use it with those medications or adjust the dose if needed. So I would say for their primary care provider considering methadone, um, if they don't have clinical experience dosing methadone, it's really important to speak to a colleague or perhaps a clinical pharmacist on your team um, to make sure that you're dosing methadone correctly, you know, you're converting or starting the dose out appropriately, you're not titrating it too quickly. You're also looking at the drug interactions, you're also getting the EKG monitoring and cardiac assessment that you might need. And I think it's really important before you put a, pa a person on methadone not to just weigh the risks and benefits of opioid therapy in general, but really look at their cardiac history and their EKG as a baseline before you start treating with that. Well, Vorfinol has a similar mechanism of action compared to methadone. So it also has, it has the mu opioid agonism activity, and it also has the NMDA receptor antagonist activity, which is helpful for neuropathic pain. But in terms of levorfenol, it does not have as many CYP3 or 4 drug interactions, and it also doesn't have any effect in the QTC interval. So those are some of the major advantages. I would argue on the con side for levorfenol, um, we certainly don't have as much clinical experience with levorfenol, so manufacturer availability of levorfenol is pretty scarce compared to methadone, so there's not as many clinicians who have experience. So my concern would be patients who end up going to the ER or urgent care, especially on the weekends, you know, providers probably wouldn't know what to do um, if they saw a patient on levorfenol. Um, Levorfenol also, we don't have a lot of data in terms of equi-analgesic dosing, so when you're converting someone from another opioid to levorfenol, that's really, it's really a guessing game um, based on what's out there. We don't have a lot of good information. Um, and then levorfenol is dosed every eight hours or three times a day automatically, so we don't maybe have that flexibility like we do with methadone in terms of dosing.